The SNES, the super-powered Nintendo Entertainment System. The console that gave fans faith that Nintendo knew what they were doing as a video game company. After they originally thought it was a scam, of course. This console improved on everything that its predecessor had, and therefore, all the games on it were also improved. Even with all of these superpowers, some games just weren't destined to be on the system. Here's my top 10 games originally planned for the SNES, but moved to another console. Once again, I got a lot of this information from Unseen64, so I highly recommend checking them out, as they have a lot of cool information on unreleased and beta games. So give them a look-see. Anyways, for everyone here at 24 Kevin Tendo, I'm your host, 24 Kevin. Let's get on with the list. Number 10, Gargoyles. A huge part of my Saturday morning cartoons, Gargoyles is an action platformer developed by Disney. The game was intended to be released during Christmas season 1995, more than eight months after the game's release for the Sega Genesis, and was cancelled before the prototype could even be made. Nintendo may not have wanted to use the same game that received average to above average reviews that could potentially have received worse reviews for almost the same game, but with less power and not as visually appealing, so I can understand why this was shelved. Number 9. Steven Seagal, Death is the Final Option Developed by Tech Magic, this was first shown at the summer 1993 CES with a scheduled release in 1994. A side-scrolling beat-em-up game, this was eventually scrapped and scheduled to move to the N64 as Deadly Honor. There is a prototype released on the internet, however it's full of glitches and I'm not surprised that Nintendo scrapped it as it just wasn't that impressive of a game. Please don't snap my neck for saying that Mr. Seagal, I'm sorry. Number 8. FX Fighter the game was basically a polygon fighter akin to Street Fighter, but with only the option to punch and kick. The game was one of the games set to use the Super FX2 chip, and was even being developed by Argonaut Software, the same makers as Star Fox. The game was tossed when the 32-bit systems were released, and made its way to the PC. I believe the reason this game was cancelled is the same reason Star Fox 2 was cancelled, as stated by Dylan Cuthbert. The reason for the non-release was the then impending Nintendo 64, which of course was intended to be released a lot sooner than it actually was. Miyamoto-san decided he wanted to have a clean break between 3D games on the Super NES and the 3D games on the new superior 64-bit system. So there you go. I guess that's the reason a lot of these games that Nintendo helped develop were held off until they could be made even better. Nintendo really hasn't changed much over the years, have they? Number 7. Ultrabots also known as Xenobots in Europe, this game has you controlling six different robot dinosaurs from a first-person command center. Developed by Nova Logic, the game was set to be released in 1992 after being mentioned in numerous publications. Most said it looked promising, and even Nintendo Power Magazine further previewed it by revealing it was set to run at 16 frames per second. Eventually, it was axed from Nintendo and released on the PC with not much word as to why, but the graphics did look much improved and with all the buttons and options needed to play the game, a mouse and keyboard actually seemed like the best fit for the game, and it worked out better. Number 6. Maniac Mansion 2. The sequel to Maniac Mansion, a game released for the NES that Nintendo demanded be reworked because they deemed it inappropriate for children, was being developed for the Super Nintendo. With all the changes Nintendo required to be changed on the original, not limited to but including, changing shithead to tuna head, removing graffiti, even though it was a hint to the player, and removing the word kill. Add that to the fact that Nintendo basically forced them to make two different versions of the same game with different art styles makes you think that when they submitted the sequel to Nintendo and got their changes back, they just decided that it wasn't worth the hassle and kept the game exclusively PC, with the title, Day of the Tentacles. Number 5, Batman Return of the Joker. A bit of a different story on this one. Based on the comic book of the same name, Batman Revenge of the Joker was released on the NES and the Genesis, but not the SNES, although that was the plan initially. Many people heralded the NES version for its outstanding graphics, however the 16-bit version looked almost the same by comparison, which is not a good thing for a console with double the power. Although the game came completed for the SNES, and you can find the ROM version of the game out there, the overwhelming consensus is that the NES version just played better. So Nintendo probably took the cue from Sega's release and didn't want to justify consumer concerns that the NES was a scam and not a necessity. Number 4. Killer Instinct 2 The sequel to the original Killer Instinct game was developed by Rare and was intended to be released on the SNES at the same time as arcades. Although no prototype has been released, developers have stated that the game was completed and fully ready to start manufacturing, 
but ultimately was never released. Since the planned release date was in 1996, the same year the N64 was coming out, Nintendo probably didn't want to stick one of its hottest IPs from the SNES on a system that was about to live out its lifespan. So they decided to port it to the N64 as Killer Instinct Gold. Number three, Dreamland of Giants. Another game developed by Rare, Codename Project Dream started to be crafted after the commercial success of Rare's earlier SNES title, Donkey Kong Country. The game was set to focus on a boy named Edson, and his encounters with Captain Black Eye and his pirate comrades. Not much else is known of the story, but the game was ultimately moved to the N64 due to storage constraints on the SNES system. Concerned with technical setbacks and the project's overall direction, the game was completely reworked into the Banjo-Kazooie franchise. Hard to believe one of the most beloved collectathons of the 90s could have potentially been just a normal run-of-the-mill side-scrolling platformer. Good thing that was all a dream, eh, Captain Black Eye? Sorry, touchy subject. Number 2, GoldenEye. A game that pioneered the multiplayer deathmatch mode and the third best-selling N64 title of all time was originally intended to be on the SNES. Just take that in for a second. Issue 69 of Nintendo Power revealed that Rare would be developing the game and it would be released on the SNES console. A few issues later, we found out more information. The game was said to be a fully rendered game that used the same ACM techniques used in Donkey Kong Country. Rare planned on making it a 2D platformer until Martin Hollis suggested that a 3D shooting game for Nintendo's upcoming Nintendo 64 console would be a lot better. Think about that for a second. If someone hadn't have made that suggestion, this would have been on the SNES and probably regarded as just a basic side-scrolling shooter game, whereas on the N64, it revolutionized a genre. Why isn't this number one? Well, there's a very good reason for that, because you guys should be surprised by number one, which is number one, Final Fantasy VII. Okay, maybe not too surprising considering the first six Final Fantasy games and the Mana series were originally developed on Nintendo consoles. The creator Hironebu Sakaguchi opened up about the original planning stages in Final Fantasy VII. The game was going to be another 2D project and would have taken place in New York. Sakaguchi wanted to make it more of a detective story with the first part involving a hot-headed character named Detective Joe chasing the main characters that blew up the city of Midgar. Game development had to be put on pause though when several staff members who were also working on Chrono Trigger needed to put all of their focus onto that game as it had grown so large it required everyone's full attention. The team started to continue development, and the project continued to grow. However, when Nintendo announced the N64 would be on cartridges, Square had to move the series to the PlayStation, as it was explained later that even the 64 disk drive wouldn't have even had enough storage for the game, and would have required more than 30 64 disk drive discs in order to store the entire game. It's hard to believe that all of this hadn't have happened. One of the most iconic games in gaming history would never have been made. At least Cloud and Smash Brothers has some logic to it now, too. And that's all the time we got for today's episode. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys thought. Did we miss anything? Leave a comment down below as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button, because we need to keep this growing. Please, I don't have a job. Anyways, for everyone here at 24 Kevin Tendo, I'm your host, 24 Kevin. I gotta go, though. I gotta go find a real job. Actually, it's kind of sad. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye!